Welcome to the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Neural Depth. Join us each week as our investigators follow a path of clues and attempt to save the world from an ancient evil. Starring John Quiet, Justin Kimmett, Shirley Nedswicky, George Chipples, Jason Hall, and Scott Troiano, with me, Matt Quiet, running the table as the Keeper. Eldritch evils and crazed cultists await you just beyond this music. All right, so uh, welcome to our creation uh, podcast. I'm sitting here with George. Say hi. Howdy. Uh, we're going to go through a quick creation, well, sort of quick creation. Um, George has already come up with a concept for his character, which is great. That's that's where I like to start, especially with Call of Cthulhu. Um, so he's going to tell you a little about his, his uh, concept, and then we're going to walk through step-by-step step of what exactly creation is, and we're going to explain the rules a little bit as we go. So, George, uh, tell me about... Your character. Okay, so the character that I've come up with, um, his name is Courtney Hathaway Weld of the Cambridge Welds. And so he is a uh, kind of a Boston Brahmin um, society type who grew up, you know, with a very set life path where he was raised in society. He was uh, given the best education with the expectation that he would go to Harvard. And from Harvard... um, do the family business, or I, for, I don't actually have what the family business is yet. But um, he did go to Harvard, and from there his life kind of took a interesting turn because the Great War broke out. He decided he had enough of schooling, and he wanted to uh, go to war and, and seek glory and adventure. And then he found out that war is, in fact, very terrible, and he wasn't good at it, and that caused quite a bit of crisis. So he spent a little bit of time kind of wandering about the world, spending a lot of time in Asia, and thinking that he'd found enlightenment amongst various Asian cultures. Um, he's a bit of an Orientalist. And so he, he was in Japan, China, India for you know several years and learned something of their cultures. He thinks he's learned everything about their cultures and um, has now returned to Boston and has set up kind of a institute for oriental learning where he uh is you know teaching people how to do yoga and things like that and also thinks that he's very worldly and very um uh very enlightened but he's also very naive still about certain things and he thinks he knows more than he does but he's generally a good person who's kind of looking for the truth and things and kind of looking to find a way after kind of lost it during the war well, and uh, george's character is going to kind of be our anchor for the beginning of the story i'm going to Use him to tie everybody else to the story and kind of make sense of why they're there. So George is kind of the most important character at the moment. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> and frankly, it's lasts. Cthulhu, so we'll see how long he stays sane enough to last. Yes. So um, looking at uh, our creation rules, the first step is to determine some characteristics. Uh, so we're going to rule 3d6, which... Um, We'll determine. We'll roll that five times, which will determine uh, strength, con, power, dexterity, and uh, appearance, and then we'll move on from there. Um, these are kind of these five are going to kind of be fluid. So he George is going to roll those individually and then uh, assign them as he sees fit from those five. So go ahead, George. Okay. So that's I'm terrible at doing thirteen. That Thank you. <laughs> thirteen. Oh, that's a bad one. That's an eight. Uh, that's seven. seven. Even worse. I'm doing five of these? Yes. Uh, that is a 13. And that is an 11. All right. So uh, looking at your, what did I say? Strength, con- uh, constitution, power, dex, and appearance kind of decide where you want to assign those. Okay. So think appearance. Let me look. Oh, and for you guys at home, I forgot. this. We are using the 6th edition of Call of Cthulhu. Uh, it's the newest edition. It kind of helps... Uh, it, it helps to have the newest stuff. The module that we're running is actually 4th uh, or 5th edition. I believe 4th. But it, it's completely compatible. The, the, additions, the additions have cleaned up some rules, but other than that, it has stayed pretty solidly the same. Um, 
we are going to the character creation that we're doing is on page 36 and 37 and we're going to use a couple of alternate rules on page 41 so you, did you get those figured out over there I'm thinking about it so I think I want him to actually be kind of a pretty boy so for I'm going to throw one of the 13s into appearance um, I think he should have decent strength so maybe that'll be 11 no, I, I want him to have power because he's got some spiritual power. So that's going to be the 11. Okay. Be power. He's actually dexterous, spending a lot of time doing yoga and martial arts and things like that. So that's going to be dex. And then constitution and strength. He's a little bit weakly. So those will be. So his constitution will be 7, his strength will be 8. Okay. Um, so next, uh, George is going to roll 2d6 plus 6 for. Uh, size and intelligence. And again, he's going to roll those 2d6 um, twice. He's going to do it twice and then assign them as, as he sees fit. So, hey, that's uh, 17. That's not bad. Yeah. <clears throat> and that is a 13. So that's not bad either. Yeah. So uh, intelligence and size. So intelligence 17 because he's got a lot of knowledge. Um, he's, he's spent a lot of time. He's not necessarily wise, but he's... Definitely learned. So that will be intelligence. And size will be, what was it, 13? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's actually tall, but weak and poor constitution, so tall and reedy, I would think. Okay. And the next step is to roll 3d6 plus 3 for education. Oop. Oh, that's okay. Uh, so there's uh, 13 plus 3 is 15. And that just goes straight into education. Yeah. Um, and then your sanity, we're not gonna we're not gonna do yet. Because step two, we're gonna wait on that. Sorry, we're gonna skip a couple of things only because we're gonna kind of jump straight to occupation and decide on that. George, did you get a chance to look at the 1920s companion? I did not. Okay, there are some samples here. Did you have one in mind already? I was kind of wondering what would fit in because he almost fits the dilettante um, occupation, which is kind of a grab bag. Because he is kind of a rich layabout who, who, you know, he's got his fingers in a lot of pies, but he's not necessarily doing any one thing. But if he's working, if he's administrating kind of this Orientalist Institute, I was wondering if that might have... Dilettante makes sense, and it is a very dilettante-like pursuit um, to do that. Uh, so <clears throat> the reason I say that is we're going to look at the, the uh, book here. Under dilettante, it says that your earning is upper... Upper lower class to wealthy, which is fine. We'll, we'll figure that out in a yeah. second. It has some suggestions for contacts and connections. This is only in the 1920s Companion, which is suggested by the uh, the adventurer running. And then you're going to get a bonus. So you get automatically get credit rating plus up to four different areas of interest that are your um, occupation skills. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of put those wherever you want. Um, and it looks like that's kind of your special there. I don't know if there was a difference in the base book that might apply. And I'm frankly, you can take either whichever one fits you better for what you wanted to do. I think Dilettante was basically the same in the base book. Um, it is kind of like a, you know, pick your interests, pick your skills. That's okay. kind of how it works. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, so lo- looking at the skills... Um, Oh, that's right. In here, it doesn't really go too deep. Yeah. Here, here, here's Dilettante. They've got art, craft, credit rating, other language, ride, shotgun, any two other skills as personal or era specialties, is what it says in the base book. Yeah. That, you know, um, that's a lot. I would say go with that, honestly. Okay. <clears throat> and just as a reminder, in the 1920s, your credit rating isn't not just how much money you have. Um, it, it's It's kind of who you are who you're no- how, how you're known so in new york you if you're from new york and you're known in your local um neighborhood your credit rating might get a bonus there that you wouldn't get say with that same character in london or in paris whereas george here um he's kind of uh he's got a lot of money and his his family's well known uh, that's pretty pretty acceptable for the for the social class that he's in so his credit rating is going to be a little bit of yeah he's got some money but um 
you know, hey, I once I met this guy's father or I've heard about his family. So that kind of applies there too. Um, so the reason we skipped all the way there is some of the occupations in 1920 um, actually give you bonuses to like con- uh, your constitution mm-hmm. or other things like that. Um, so I wanted to make sure we didn't end up determining a stat that we would have to change later. Right. So um, did you, while we're sitting here, did you want to move anything around? Uh, we're using an alternate rule where um, you can move three points from one rolled characteristic to another, and you can do that up to three times. So did you want to raise your strength or your con a little bit? or I kind of do. Constitutions and strength are both pretty low. Um, I wouldn't mind actually bringing them both up. Actually, maybe appearance I do want to get rid of. Maybe make that a 10, so he's kind of average. Okay. Bring my con up to 10. Okay. And you don't have to do all three points if you don't yeah. want to. Okay. So, for example, I could drop my could I drop my intelligence by one and bring my strength up to nine? You sure could. Okay, I think I'll do that. And then with those two, you would have another one if you really wanted to. You don't have to at all. I kind of have a tendency not to have any, I don't know. I kind of wanted... See, the thing is I wanted him to know martial art and I wanted him to be kind of like a grappler. So that's why I think it might be beneficial to have a bit higher strength than I do. Um, Well, and keep in mind that it's not necessarily your strength that's going to matter for that. It's going to be your skills. Right. And grappling sometimes is more about decks, and you do have that. Yeah. So so that might be... I'm just thinking for the damage bonus, but right now I'm at 20. Oh, but it's I really hard to get a damage bonus. It, it, it really is difficult. You and if I to... boost that, yeah. So I'm good where I'm at. Because okay. the damage bonuses, you've got to have what? It's uh, cumulative... 24, I think? Yeah, you got to have uh, 25 to 25, 32 to yeah. get anything. So that's yeah. So that, that's kind of... Yeah, you got to be huge <laughs> and strong, and that's yeah. kind of hard to do. So that's fine. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is step two, determine characteristic roles. Um, so in your character box, you want to multiply your intelligence times five. So your intelligence is uh, 16, so that would be an 80. Mm-hmm. 80 is your idea. <clears throat> and we'll roll that anytime. You as a player aren't sure, but I have a clue to give you that your character might pick up on. Right. Um, power is t- uh, power times five is your luck. So your power, I didn't see that. That's Sorry. 55. Okay. And then your education times five is your knowledge. So uh, that'd be, oh, good, 75. Yes. 15 times 5 is 75. And then you're going to add your strength and size, which we kind of already did, <clears throat> which is what, a 22? 21. No, 22. Sorry, yeah, 22. <laughs> I don't know. 22? Um, <laughs> to, to figure out your damage bonus. Um, which is zero. Yeah, so that'd be a zero. And then your um, under your Cthulhu Mythos, it's actually you're at a 99, which is yes. good. That's, that's a good place to start. Um, then your hit points uh, we're going to go down to step 3 and determine derived characteristic points um, your hit points is directly below the characteristic box you add your size and con and divide by 2 uh, round up so 23 so you'd have 11 or 12 I'm sorry 12 yes. so you want to circle that and then as you go down you will actually scratch things out and uh, you know <laughs> lose hit points um, and then your magic points is equal to your power. Your power is an 11, so yes. you have 11. Uh, same thing there. And then your sanity is your power. So your sanity is power times 5. Yes, so that's also 55. So 55. 55 is not by, by far the highest, nor is it by far the lowest, but you're clearly not insane yet. <laughs> so um, we went to we went through steps 1 through 3. We'll go to determine occupation skills. So you've decided to be a dilettante. You're going to roll a d10 to see what your um, uh, income is. Seven. Uh, so you have four thousand. Or I'm sorry, that is the wrong era. Sixty-five hundred dollars a year. It has that much money in property. Um, so that would be your cash. Sixty-five hundred is your cash. Do so you have five times that in property? But five times sixty-five hundred is your yeah. And, and and I you can fill that information in. That's a lot of flavor for right now. Sure, it will matter later, especially that cash on hand. That one might actually matter pretty pretty solidly later. I think personal will probably be thirty two five hundred if my math is correct, which it might not be. That sounds right. So yeah, okay. So um, then you are going to choose an occupation, which you did, um, and then so now you take your education and multiply it by twenty. So your education is. 
15, so that's 300 points that you're going to get. You will divide between your occupation skills. Mm-hmm. So whatever it listed there. So if you want to mark these, I wouldn't mark those boxes. Those are used for yeah, I'm kind just of leveling up. Put a little dot by them for right um, now. So you get art, craft, credit rating, other language, ride, shotgun, and then any two other skills that make sense for the era and, okay. and what you're doing. So maybe a cult would make sense here. Yeah, a cult would definitely make sense for this um, guy. Because that's what he was studying in the East. Specifically and, tracking down and, things that were weird. <clears throat> I'll warn you ahead of time. I'm, I'm sure you're aware of this, but there is no true martial arts. But there mm-hmm. is a punch kick and a grapple. Those oh, there's are, martial arts. Oh, is there? Yeah. It does something weird. It's It actually has effects. Does it? Yeah. I didn't notice that there was martial arts. I should probably pay attention to that part. Yeah. Not a big deal. I'm actually um, running another Call of Cthulhu game, and I advise my players not to take martial arts because it's kind of a wonky skill, and I'm going to ignore my own advice and probably take martial arts. Use in combination with an attack with fist punch, headbutt, kick, or grapple. If the attack roll is greater to or less, or lesser or less than the attacker's martial arts percentage, the attack does double damage. Thus, a fist punch would... Okay, so this is just going to double your damage. Yeah, and then you can also use it... Um, you can use it to parry? Yeah, to parry certain things. Yeah, basically. Not bullets, though. No, or other projectiles, which is good. Yeah. Um, and then I would suggest you decide what kind of martial arts you know. <clears throat> I would guess that because you are dexterity over strength, you'd have some sort of soft style instead of a hard style. Soft is for throwing and, and such, and uh, hard is for more striking. Let's think about Tai Chi, possibly. Would that work? I don't know. Let's look up Tai Chi and make sure it was around in the 1920s. I was doing some research earlier. I don't remember when it first came to U.S. shores. A lot of this stuff was... Oh, you know what? I don't have the internet connected to my computer right now. Ah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, go for it. Okay. If, if it doesn't work, we can always change it and modify it a little bit later. Not sure. a big deal. So, um, so you've got your, set, your skills set. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you take those 300 points and kind of divide them up. Um, All right. And kind of as a reminder, uh, uh, two skills at 35 is not anywhere near as good as one skill at 70. Right. Um, anything above 75 is considered pretty mastery of a situation. Um, and then anything above 90 is um, you're, you're more than an expert. You're, you're one of the leading people probably in the country or the state for whatever that is. Right. So... Credit rating is going to be important for this guy. He's got a lot of disposable income. Yes. So it starts at 15%. Mm-hmm. So I think I will drop maybe 60 points into that. Okay. Which put would put 75. him at 75. Okay. So keeping track of the totals. Then for other language, um, would you allow him to know multiple languages? You can know as many as you want. Just again, remind that. remember that anything at 30 is going to be not nearly yeah. as good as, you know. Well, I could see him... Picking up a couple languages as he goes on that he doesn't really know too well. but Right. Yeah. I, I know it's not useful from a flavor perspective, possibly. Um, first off, Chinese. He would spend a lot of time in China, I think. Well, Chinese isn't a language. I, a country. Exactly. You're correct. So <laughs> so that that can be anything from Mandarin to Cantonese to... What is... So Cantonese is Hong Kong, right? It's a good question. I'm not positive. I know Mandarin is the quote-unquote official language. Yeah. So Mandarin is what he would know. Okay. And... I'm going to put 40 on that. Okay. And you were in the First War, so probably stationed in France France or Belgium. Yes. Um, so those are always options. You could also have learned German. It's, it was kind of um, expected in those times. German um, and French were both very big languages to know for business. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you could have just picked up something odd, like some sort of um, Indian dialect. Yeah. Um, I was thinking either Indian or Japanese, but I think Indian might be, excuse me, it might be more accurate, might be more likely. So, And Indian is not a language. Again, it is a country. Yes. So. Hindu would be the language. Okay. See, so yeah, and I'll take some German too, maybe 20 of German. Okay. He learned things. He learned obscenities to yell across the trenches. That, yeah, makes sense. That's so, the kind of thing you learn. 200, 180, then... Maybe we'll take 30 for Hindu. He's not really proficient in any of these, but he's got a smattering of yeah. things. Then it'll be helpful along the way. You may not know exactly what's going on, but you should be able at least to um, 
identify the languages you know. Yes. So. And then I've got art, craft, martial arts, occult. Occult is a big one. I want a good number of points in occult. Um, that's kind of his bread and butter right now. So let's put 65 into occult. Okay. Uh, 65 on top of the 5 Oh, yeah, so that actually makes 70 total. Thank you. I always forget the... Yeah, there's a base for everything. Extra bases for yep. the ones that, aren't, that don't start at 1. So I was at 150, 160. Puts me at 90. So I've got 90 points left. I've got martial arts and shotgun. And ride, I don't see him really riding that much. I don't see him being much of an arts and crafts type person. Well, and would, would he have learned to ride... Um, you were in World War One, and your primary job was courier. Was that no? He was, he was a um, more of an aide. He was in the trenches briefly, but mostly he served as a general's aide. So he would have been at general's headquarters doing things like, you know, moving things around on okay. the big board and perhaps brewing tea for Pershing okay. and things like that. Okay. Um, so I, I wouldn't. I, I guess what I'm saying is I wouldn't say right is out of the question. So even a low score for a socialite at that time mm-hmm. would make sense. Okay, it doesn't mean you have to take it. Um, and shotgun would probably be more like you. Oh, you know what? Skeet shooting. I would yeah, think. You, that kind of stuff. So yeah, any of that is fine. Um, I'm going to drop twenty into shotgun. Okay, let's bring that up to fifty. Okay. Um, so I've got seventy left for. Oh, I've got seventy arena cults. So seventy for martial arts. He likes martial arts a lot, but I'll put sixty into that. Okay. So that's at sixty-one, and then. Um, for ride, there's a five percent, and I've got. And and it's important to note for the listeners that ride is mostly important on anything daring and dangerous. Anybody can get on a horse and kind of ride it, whether it looks good or not. That's a whole other matter. Um, but ride is for those times when you're being chased or you're lo- trying to get over something or around something, and that's how those that's how that will be end up being rolled. Actually, I'm going to drop that extra ten points into. I'm going to split it up, so into martial arts and occult. Okay. Um, actually, into Hindu and occult. Now, this, you know, this is where the decision-making comes into Because <laughs> um, I've got 10 points left. Five will go into martial arts for sure, so that's going to be at 66%. And then I've got five points left, which I'll throw into... I'll throw that into occult, because that's actually... I need some more research skills, and so just beef that up pretty highly. Okay. So occult's at 75, so that takes my... That's my occupational... Okay. Skills right there. All right. So the next step is to look at uh, your personal interest skills. So you'll take your intelligence times 10. So 16 times 10 is 160. And it is important to note that any points that, that are not allocated now are lost. So there's no reason to hold on to anything. So uh, you have 160 points that you can put across anything. I would suggest staying away from occupational skills only because they're pretty good as it is. Um, or at least occupational skills you already have something in. Mm-hmm. But think of what you kind of studied in school. So maybe a little bit of accounting, if that makes sense, since you're going into your father's business, because no matter what the business was, accounting is always going to be important. Um, library use is always a big one. Um, you know, it could, it could, it could be a, a bunch of different stuff here. There's, there's plenty. So it's really, you know, what kind of, what kind of guy is Courtney? And that would be the time for, you know, uh, kick, punch. Um, oh, yes, that too. Grapple, headbutt. So that's going to be important because of the um, yeah. martial Cause, arts. Because you, if you use martial arts and you can't punch a thing, it doesn't really matter. It's an issue. Yeah. yeah. So let me take 20. I'm going to drop 20 each into um, punch and kick. Okay. So, or as they call it here, fist. <laughs> okay. Fist and kick. So I've got... Let's see, 40, so my fist will be 70%, my kick will be 45%. Um, and then that leaves me with 120. Things he would be interested in. Spot hidden would be useful. Library use is something that he uses a lot. Persuade would be also an interesting one. Yeah, I'll put 20 into accounting, so he's got 30% there. Because he knows a little bit, but that wasn't really what interested him the most. He was much more interested in other things. Maybe I'll put let me put thirty into anthropology. That's where he learned about some other cultures and kind of got a basic knowledge and kind of got first interested in his studies of you know the Orient and the other and things like that. Are you adding in their base percentage? I did for counting, not for anthropology. Because there's okay. a little one percent. <laughs> yeah, that big one percent. Yes. 
or make the difference. Um, spot hidden. Listener spot hidden. I find that always really funny. Is he better at looking or hearing? Um, I like spot hidden because that just takes me back. Okay. So I'm at 70. Put 30 into spot hidden. So that'll be at 55. Okay. And Should I've got leave you with 40 points? 40, yes. So let's think of something interesting to use that on. Library use. Okay. Yeah, 65% in library use. It's a good number in library use. Okay. Um, you know, he's an educated guy. He also spends a lot of time kind of researching things. Yeah, and then during your time in, in Asia, probably mm-hmm. used library use. Yes. So, um, okay, so that's step number four. All the points are allocated. Next, um, we're looking at uh, determining weapons. Um, so your punches and kicks, I believe, they already have all their information on there, right? Yes. All their damage is already on there. Um, then your gun. You will have a shotgun. I mean, you'll have access yeah. to one. Whether you carry it around is probably not the case. But right. you do have access to a shotgun. The question is, what kind of a shotgun? So we're going to go back to the 1920s Companion, mostly because they have the coolest shotgun list. And we're going to see what, you, what strikes your fancy. Because in there it's kind of just handguns. Shotguns. Oh, those are rifles. Shotguns. So here you go. So the table up here. So it looks like you've got a Browning Automatic, Greener, uh, Far Killer. <laughs> so it, it's got kind of your your basic ideas. I'm not going to charge you any money for this. This is just stuff you should own. Yeah. So um, notice that all of the shotguns are made in the USA. It's mm-hmm. kind of a big deal. Uh, make sure you don't grab anything that's made after 1924. Yes. So uh, the, what is that? The Savage Models uh, 620 slide action. Um, you also might look at the, the, ki- to the kind of action that they are. Yes. Um, and then, you know, the loading type. I'm actually going to go with this, uh, the Winchester 1912, because it says it was used as a trench weapon. Okay. And so that's something that he might have carried yeah. during the war briefly or would have been familiar with. And, and then something you're familiar with. You can want to yeah. keep. Yeah, and that makes can, sense. So it's pump action, side loading, all that kind of good stuff. Okay. Made in 1912. Um, and then what gauge are you getting? Because it looks like that one has four k- gauge options. 12, 16, and 20. I would say 12. That's uh, 12, 12 is harder, or is bigger. Mm-hmm. It's 26, or 28 is going to be smaller and not do as much tight yeah. damage. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, I think 12 would work. Okay. All right. And then let's... So you want to write all that information down? Yeah. It really looks like not all of it's going to be down there. Because some of it's by gauge. So you're going with a 12 gauge, and that's kind of important. So we'll look at the 12 gauge damage. And then uh, your hit points and your capacity are the two that really come off of this that are important. Yeah, where is that at? So hit so points, hit points. 10 and 5 for capacity. Yes. And then damage types. So we come over to... There we are. There we go. So, uh, you said 12 gauge? Yeah. Uh, a slug is going to do a D10 plus 6, and then a, a buckshot is going to do 46. So the question is, do you use slugs or buckshot? Probably buckshot. Okay. Um, and that is good at 10 yards, whereas the slug is good at 30. So you're getting distance over damage. Mm-hmm. Um, and then your rate of fire on that, what was that, a pump action? Yes. And it is a large caliber, mm-hmm. so you would get one. Um, that that number in, in um, brackets there, write that down as well. Um, when you get your, uh, if, you, if you get your gun skill above 75, you can use that number. So you get two per round instead of one. Okay. So, um, and then your, what was that, side load? You can yes. load two ro- cartridges per round. I don't know if there's a spot for that. It doesn't look like it, but you might note that. Okay. And then uh, your malfunction. Mm-hmm. We're only going to write down the, the clean numbers because hopefully your gun doesn't get ne- neglected or dirty. But under pump action, it's a 99. So if you roll a 99 or a, a triple zero, your gun will malfunction. So it's not a bad number. Bad numbers, though, because yeah. by that time you're not hitting anything anyway. So um, kind of back to the base book. So is that all the weapons you really need? One? Yeah, that's okay. about it. Um, you wouldn't. Would you have a pistol? I don't think so. I think the shotgun. Yeah, because he, you know, he's got his fists and he's got his shotgun for. Okay. 
Um, so um, the last step, hypothetically last step, um, is to determine your additional background information. Um, Mark scars and mental disorders are where, where this is. So the bo- actually the top left of the first page, there's a bunch of information there that you mm-hmm. can put in. Um, I believe mental disorders is something you really want to look at. Yes. So we talked about that a little bit. Um, we'll, we'll leave that alone for right now. I don't want to give the listeners too much of information. Just sure. to see how that comes out in, in game. Uh, mental disorders are important because if um, George's character is to see something completely horrible and and he reacts to it, um, he will react according to his mental disorder if he has one. If he doesn't have one, then he'll act randomly determined by the keeper, so me. Um, and then you want to make sure you put your name on there. You got that. Um, uh, the minimum age for an investigator is education plus six years. However... We're going to skip that because you're at least 21. Go ahead and determine your age as you see fit. Um, you can, at this point, add 10 years onto your character to get a point of education and 20 additional occupation points. But you also, after age of 20, you're going to subtract one strength, one con, one dex, or one appearance. So that kind of, that that's a downside. Mm-hmm. So I think you had an idea of exactly how old you were to begin with. So yeah, what this, year is this taking place in? This is nineteen twenty. This will be January fourteenth, nineteen twenty-five. Is when the game will start. Twenty-five. So figure seven, or I'm sorry, yeah, eighteen. Seven years after the war ended, so probably eight or nine. Since you probably served, you may you probably started serving close to the end of the war, and yeah, the last year or so was really right. not much. So um, keep that in mind. If you, I think we discussed you either left college or graduated and then went. He left college, so, so. He, he never actually got his uh, bachelor's. So I think he would have left in his junior or even maybe his senior year. So he would have been, um, say, 21 when he left. And that would have been 1917. Okay. So, so that would make you uh, 28. Yeah, 28. That's good. Give or take, depending on when your birthday is. Yeah. So that is the basics. Um, George is going to go to the second sheet and he's going to fill out some information on holdings and houses and, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, There's lots and lots of stuff there. Um, And he'll fill that out as he gets the ideas. Um, There's some spots on here he won't be filling out, like magic abilities. He doesn't have anything yet. And that's the key word, is yet. (laughs) Um, He doesn't have any mythic mythos tomes and that's a yet us also. So... He's got a well-rounded character, and he's pretty set for the game. So, George, let's talk about uh, how the game works real quick. So, sure. let's say that you wanted to investigate on um, this awesome dragon death punch that you heard about, because you're kind of into the martial arts and the occult, um, and you had a library with that kind of information in front of you. What you would do is I would say, okay, that's the information you want. Let's make a library use. And so you would roll percentage. Um trying to get under your library use number, which uh, looks like 65. Um, then that action, depending on what it was, in this case library use, takes time. So it would probably take at least two hours, probably more like four or six, that you spent researching that information. Um, if you rolled under, you would succeed. Sometimes, let's say you were in a really bad library that probably doesn't have much, I would give you negatives. Mm. So I would say, okay, roll your library use minus 10 or minus 15. Or if you're in this opulent um, Buddhist temple that focuses only on martial arts, that's only the only books they have, you probably would get a plus 10 or a plus 15. Um, there's always a chance of failure. So even if you have 99%, you can't go above that, and you still have that 1% chance where you're not going to be able to find what you need, or you're not going to know it, or you're not going to be able to persuade that guy. or So... Um, so that's how the basics work. In combat, it's a little different. Right now, uh, it looks like your uh, fist is a 20. Is that a 20? 70. Oh, 70. So your fist is a 70. So if you attempted to punch a guy, um, forget martial arts for right now, because that just complicates it just a little bit, that's okay. You would roll your percentage and try and get under that. If you hit, then you would roll your D3. So D3 is a D6 divided by 2, uh, rounding down, I believe. Yes. Um, so you would do a D3. Now, a D3 doesn't seem like a lot of damage to 
care play, people that play things like Dungeons and Dragons or uh, higher fantasy. However, if you'll notice under your hit points, you have dead negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. They're all dark. Do you notice that? Mm-hmm. That's because at those points you're unconscious. So if you have two hit points left, technically you're still alive. However, you're unconscious. If you're at zero or below. You have to be healed in the next certain amount of time. I believe it's one round. Mm. Or you will die. That's it. So the other thing to keep in mind is, unlike in fantasy role-playing games, where once you're healed, it heals everything, you will be healed for each individual damage that you took. So if you get shot with 14 guns and they all do one point of damage, and you get that, that nick of time healing to keep you from bleeding to death, you have 14 wounds you have to heal. And those are all individual, which in the end is good. You want different wounds because you get healed for the first wound, and then you also get healed for the second wound, and those can be at the same time. Um, However, if you take one, if you look at your shotgun, you do 46. It's a lot of damage. You could potentially shoot a guy one time, and that's the end of that guy. If you got shot, and let's say you have, you, you do have 12 hit points, say you took 10 damage. That's going to take forever to, to heal. Yeah. That's one gaping chest wound. Yeah. Hopefully not a gaping chest wound. You're probably <laughs> dead at that point. But that's the idea. So combat in Cthulhu is deadly. And that's something important to keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> also, while you may end up fighting fighting cultists or regular people, they're kind of dangerous. Um, Cthulhu and Mythos creatures are incredibly dangerous. Um even the basic monsters have things like takes half damage from shot from guns or has 812 hit points and good luck. Yeah. Um, Cthulhu himself, namesake of the game, um, he makes his attack. There's no percentage uh, attached to that. And he kills 1d4 investigators per round, period. <laughs> so one or f- between one and four of you are already dead that first combat round. So keep that in mind as well. Yes. So um, that's the basics uh, basics of Call of Cthulhu. Um, That's the basics of how we kind of set up and uh, build a character. Uh, George, do you have any questions before we we kind of close this out? No, that sounds good. I'm pretty familiar with the system, so um, everything makes sense to me um, so far. Yeah. All right. Well, um, so that's it for... For us tonight, uh, remember this is Nerds Domain presents Masks of Neural Tip. Uh, you can always email us any kind of questions or thoughts you guys have about the podcast at nerdsdomain at gmail.com. Or you can catch me on Twitter at quiet. Did you want to give your... Oh yeah, you can um, catch me at, at the chimples. Um, and then, uh, you know, if you want to, you can catch us on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash nerdsdomain. If you enjoy our podcast, we encourage you to give us a review on iTunes and let us know what you think. And uh, we'll talk to you about the horrific uh, realities that we're facing (laughs) real soon. 